Today we're talking circumcision, the risks, the benefits, and how we came to our decision as a Jewish family to decline this long-standing tradition. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I just had my second baby, my first son, about three weeks ago. We knew long before we had kids that we would forego circumcising any sons because I literally brought it up when we had not been dating that long. My husband and I met on Tinder and I felt like our relationship got pretty serious within about four dates. My husband is Ashkenazi Jewish and was raised Jewish. I am not ethnically Jewish, nor was I raised religiously Jewish. And I know that there are going to be people that come for me in the comments that say like, oh, well, then your kids aren't Jewish. Uh, just save your breath. My husband was raised Reform, and in Reform Judaism, if one parent is Jewish, then the children are considered Jewish. It does not necessarily have to be the mother um, like it is typically in like Orthodox Jewish communities. Anyway, the reason I brought it up when we hadn't been dating very long is because since my husband was Jewish, I knew that circumcision might be on the table for him with any future children. And I'd had several life experiences that made it a deal breaker for me. And I also want to say that this is a judgment-free zone. Obviously, I've had different life experiences than anyone else watching this video. And had I not had these specific life experiences, I might have circumcised any son that I had just because I wouldn't have known any differently. I thought it was something that you had to do or that you were supposed to do up until I was in nursing school. And really, that was my first encounter with circumcision was as a student nurse, I assisted with one and that was enough for me ever. We used to routinely circumcise babies shortly after birth on the labor and delivery unit. And when I did my labor and delivery rotation as a student nurse, I did escort a baby boy back to be circumcised and I saw the whole process. So they stripped him down completely naked. They strapped him to what's called a circ board, which is basically a plastic board in the shape of a baby with wrist straps and ankle straps made out of Velcro. So they can literally strap the baby's limbs down. And then the baby does not get any anesthetic at most hospitals. At some hospitals, they get like a topical numbing cream, but it does not do a whole lot. And then there are a couple of different ways to circumcise, but ultimately... They cut off the foreskin with no anesthetic. And my job as the student nurse was to dip a pacifier in sugar water and try to keep it in this baby's mouth to keep it from screaming. And I will tell you, I was not successful. That baby was not having it. That sugar water did not do anything to soothe it. And I definitely had this visceral reaction of like, this is not okay what we're doing to this baby. I felt I felt really icky about it. So then by the time I was a labor and delivery nurse, I declined from participating in circumcisions. I did not want to be a part of that. But I did still have to care for babies when I would sometimes do postpartum nursing who had been circumcised. And I, I saw, I did see moms regret that decision. I would see them look at this baby's raw, red, angry looking penis and be like, ugh, is it supposed to look like that? And it's like, well, yeah, we removed a mucous membrane that was supposed to be there. It's a wound now that has to heal. Um, yeah, and it just really turned me off from that. In the last few years, we've really moved away from doing circumcisions on labor and delivery, and now I most often see them done at the baby's two-week checkup with the pediatrician. The second life experience I had that really soured my view on circumcision was in my early 20s. I had a boyfriend who was really upset about the fact that he had been circumcised as an infant, and I actually had a close male friend who also was really upset about the fact that he'd been circumcised as an infant. They both felt like this major medical alteration had been made to their bodies that was going to impact their sex lives for the rest of their life that they didn't consent to. When a male is circumcised, they lose a lot of nerve endings from the tip of their penis. And if you want to go down this rabbit hole, you can, but there are interviews of men who have been circumcised as adults, and they will state that they feel like their sexual pleasure was significantly diminished post-circumcision. Finally, my last major life experience was just as a midwife. Even though I don't personally perform circumcisions, though there are midwives who do, I was trained on how to counsel patients about circumcision. And that was the first time I really learned all of the risks and benefits. I don't know that a lot of pediatricians really go over all of the risks when circumcising a baby. I think it's a sensitive subject. And so if a patient says like, yep, I want to circumcise my son, they're like, okay, and they, they do it. Um, but definitely let me know in the comments if you have had a child circumcised like, do you feel like they went over all of the risks? Because there is a significant risk of bleeding and of infection and ultimately death. There are babies that die in the United States every year from complications from their circumcisions. Um, and I actually had a patient not that long ago, is a few months before I went on maternity leave, who took her son to get circumcised at his two-week visit. 
his two week checkup, and then immediately had to take him to the emergency room because he lost so much blood from his circumcision. So it, it happens. Fortunately, he, he was okay, um, but it was a really scary experience for her. In my opinion, I feel like the risks outweigh the benefits. The benefits that are cited for circumcision are a decreased risk of HIV, though I think it's worth noting that most of those studies are coming out of sub-Saharan Africa, where HIV is significantly more prevalent than it is here. Um, I did get into an argument with a resident physician once who was like, oh, well, you want to circumcise to decrease the risk of penile cancer. And it's like, is that really, is that really why we're circumcising? Like in theory, if you cut off the whole penis, that would also decrease the risk of penile cancer. It's just like, we don't routinely cut off healthy tissue. Like we don't routinely do mastectomies on literally everyone to do, decrease the risk of breast cancer, even though it would, like we're not routinely cutting off healthy tissue for that. I don't think that's a, a good enough argument. Um, and then, you know, there are people say like, oh, it's cleaner. I mean, you learn how to clean your penis. You don't have to alter it. Um, or that it decreases the risk of UTIs, which, yeah, that's true. Um, but if you told me removing my clitoris would decrease my risk of UTIs, I would still rather take an occasional UTI and keep my clitoris. That's just me. Ultimately, insurance companies in the United States do not um, think that the health benefits are enough to cover it. They, they consider it a cosmetic procedure. And at least as far as I know, most insurances are not going to cover a circumcision. I see it run anywhere from $250 to $650, which patients are having to pay out of pocket. And I also feel like that makes it kind of a conflict of interest for pediatricians. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics has this very wishy-washy position statement on circumcision about how it's, you know, a personal decision and it's okay to do it and there are health benefits, blah, blah, blah. Um, but if they're lining their pockets with cash payments every single time they do one, like, again, that makes me feel icky. It's also worth noting that in most developed countries, infant circumcision is not that routine or commonplace. It's really just a big thing in the United States. Um, there were a few physicians in the late 1800s and the early 1900s who really popularized circumcision, uh, both as like a way to be more hygienic, but also it got a really big push from Dr. Kellogg of Kellogg's Corn Flakes Flame as a way to get teenage boys to masturbate less. And I think we know how successful that has been. As far as Judaism goes, when my husband and I got married, I did volunteer to go through the formal conversion process to Judaism uh, before I actually knew how extensive that would be. So I'm actually kind of grateful my husband was like, oh no, that's not necessary. Um, he had said that as long as I was willing to take his Jewish last name and give our children his last name and raise our children Jewish, he did not feel like that was necessary. And I did offer uh, to have Matt be on this video and he said he did not want to be on camera, but you should know he edits all my videos. So he said it was okay if I spoke for him. Anyways, I did go to Torah studies every week with my husband for the first year and a half that we were married, and I do take my role as a Jewish wife and a Jewish mother very seriously. I learned how to make challah the first year we were married, I pray in Hebrew with my family every Friday night, and I sing to my children in Hebrew. Judaism is the only religion practiced in our home. One of the interesting things I learned going to Torah studies class was that the first Jewish man, Abraham, actually circumcised himself as an old man in the desert. One of the things that I really appreciate about Reform Judaism is that it's viewed that it's okay for customs and laws to change with the times. So if our son feels that being circumcised is essential to his Jewish identity, then we will let him make that choice as an adult. I'm just grateful that when I brought it up to my future husband, who I did not even know was my future husband at the time, that he was on board with the way I felt and he said he felt like the practice was outdated and barbaric and he was fine with declining it for any sons that we may have. I will say that if you come from a background like Judaism, um, and it's also common practice in Islam, it is really, it's a touchy subject. And that's something I was nervous talking to my husband's parents about. And I will say one of them uh, was more accepting of our decision than the other. Um, fortunately, I think they they both support us now, um, but I do think we're the only people in the family who have made this decision. And I know we're not the first ones to really um, consider the decision. I know some of his um, other family members like really kind of hemmed and hawed about it and then ultimately went through with it. Um, but it's it's hard to change tradition and it's hard especially for men, um, because they're really not allowed to talk about their feelings or have, have strong feelings about things that have happened to them. But I think there are more men out there than we realize who are upset that this was done to them, but 
if they try to talk about it, they get met with like, oh, I'll be a man, get over it. And you can't remember it. You know, the general attitudes we have about men having feelings. But I do think we're going to see it fall more and more out of practice in the coming years. And I will say as a midwife, even just in the last, how long have I been a midwife now? Seven years that I've been a midwife, I've seen more and more patients declining it. And it's definitely becoming less commonplace in the United States than it used to be. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. In the coming weeks, I want to talk about just some of the stuff I've been dealing with postpartum. So dealing with a laceration, oh my gosh, this has been a totally different experience this time. So I've definitely figured out some tips and tricks. If you have stitches for making them more tolerable, um, I want to do a breastfeeding video and also just talk about using the transition from one child to two children um, because that has actually gone a lot better than I would have anticipated. Um, and definitely for us, the transition from one to two kids has been a million times easier than the transition from no kids to one kid. So if you think those things might be interesting, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching.